uh, dad and grandfather um, were cash crop farmers um, growing a lot of barley, wheat, oats, okay. and hay, usually. Um, and also fishermen. So they usually fished in the morning. Growing That's up, probably you know, I was job. driving tractors since about the age of five. My name is Andrew Sullivan and I'm the vineyard manager at Pro Morris at Winery. I've been here for just over a year. My specialty is organic and biodynamic viticulture. I think I bring a lot of passion and hard work. Um, I think I have insights that through time and experience I've gained and I have been given a platform here to grow as a viticulturalist as a winemaker, but also as a fan of wine. I get to experience wine in its more raw and natural form than a lot of other producers do. I think that as a community, uh, viticulturalists um, tend to band together a little bit and we do rely on each other a lot for, for knowledge, for uh, observation and questions that we may have. But I also think that it is somewhat um, separated from the production side, so the winemaking side, and also the rest of just the general public. Um, I think that the fun part really starts when the grapes are harvested and they're already in the winery. I think that not a lot of people are interested in spending, you know, three or four months pulling weeds in a field or tucking grape shoots into wires or spraying or cultivating and spending you know 14 hours on a tractor it's not as illustrious or as glitzy like I said or fancy as some people want but I think that it takes somebody who's truly passionate but also understands what the end result is all the work that I do all the effort and passion that I put into is so that when this grape turns into wine and gets into the bottle, that people who have never tasted our wine or taste our wine every year, they love it. Or maybe they hate it, but that's okay too. That subjectivity that comes with wine is really interesting. We don't always, uh, we can't always decide what people will like and won't like. But the goal is to just get it to this point and then let people judge for themselves. Grape growing was n not always the goal. I originally went to school at Concordia in Montreal to be a geologist. The goal was actually to hunt diamonds for a living. But after graduating the program, I realized very quickly that there was not a whole lot of jobs for that or opportunity. And those opportunities tended to come to people who were a little bit maybe um, better connected. So I started to branch more into agriculture because that was a little bit more natural for me. And so after graduating I did a lot of um, GIS and also environmental awareness for just general public through NGOs. And through that I actually connected with some winemakers and cider producers in the Monterey region in Quebec. And that sparked my interest and passion for grape gro organic grape growing and winemaking. So I moved to Niagara because there are not a whole lot of schools that teach winemaking in North America. In fact, there's only three or four. And there are, we are lucky enough in Canada to have two in the Niagara region, which wasn't that far from Montreal. So I moved to Niagara to take the Niagara College course in uh, enology and viticulture which was a two and a half year diploma and I graduated with honors and I started uh, managing vineyards um, across the Niagara region. I took a job in BC because I wanted to travel a little bit with my wine experience and got to be a vineyard manager on Vancouver Island for a year. And um, after my experience in on Vancouver Island I moved back here to be the organic viticultural manager at Ravine Vineyard. 
and then got a position as an assistant winemaker at Featherstone Estate Winery just here, um, not too far, but five, ten minutes away from here. I worked there for about five and a half years. I worked for a short time during COVID um, in the cider industry. I kind of was very interested in cider and beer making for a while, but uh, when I seen the opportunity to come work here at Pearl Morissette, I um, very quickly recognized that my passion had never been in cider. It was always winemaking and especially grape growing. And uh, my experience with tractors and mechanics and grape growing in the Niagara region has served me pretty well in the last year here at Pro Morissette. So Pro Morissette was a project started by Francois Morissette and Mel Pearl. Um, it was a project to show the world what Niagara was capable of in winemaking. So what makes Pearl Morissette is the fact that we are uncompromising when it comes to both wine and grape growing. And we approach the brand as a platform to show the world what Niagara is capable of. I think a lot of wineries make wine to sell and they try to cater to the public. Here we are uncompromising and we make wines that we want to drink. I think that we have a better sense of the pulse of winemaking and grape growing in Niagara than um, a lot of other people tend to have. I think that my passion has evolved by just doing it. I think that I came to winemaking and grape growing um, a little bit by accident. Um, I kind of fell into it and because I had farming background, it fit with what um, my experience had been. But I think that it's really grown on me. I think that I have developed a real instinct for how to grow grapes that can't really be taught. It has to be felt. Well, I think a Niagara grape um, is grown in a lot of suffering. I think that a lot of the best uh, wine producing regions in the world also um, have to go through a, a certain amount of suffering and that contributes to uh, how good they are in the, in the bottle. A lot of other farmers and um, especially fruit producers, they're looking for high yields and high weight and they're less concerned with the actual flavor of their produce. Um, I think when you start to get into organics and especially into winemaking and grape growing, it's um, paramount that you really understand and also amplify the ability of the plant to accentuate the area that it's growing in, the soils that it's growing in, the climate that it's growing in, the amount of sun, the amount of rain. Um, and also it's an expression of um, what we do as farmers. All of our decisions have ongoing um, effects and are amplified in the wine and in the glass. Um, and not a lot of people realize how much you know, blood, sweat and tears go into making just a, a simple glass of wine. Um, the interesting thing, obviously, growing grapes is that it's a monoculture. And being organic, we're trying to increase biodiversity as much as possible because an increase in biodiversity means an increase in environmental health. And um, since we can't really change the fact that grapes are a monoculture, we try to increase biodiversity by having some of the most diverse cover crops um, in the area. We also promote a lot of uh, different types of insects and uh, bird activity. We don't necessarily um, try to 
push those things out of the vineyard. We want them there because they all contribute to the ecosystem that we're trying to express and accentuate. The, my favorite part of the growing process is the harvesting. Um, it's uh, quite nail biting to get up to that point, but once everything has been harvested, there's a big weight off my shoulders, um, trying to get you know clean fruit into the winemaker so that he can then do his magic and do his thing and make the wine that he wants to make and then I'm giving him a product that he can work with. Dealing with the stress that mother nature tends to kind of throw at us, um, the unpredictability of weather, the unpredictability of uh, winter patterns and winter events that we can't really control or, or even influence in positive ways sometimes, that, that can be really hard to deal with and, and very stressful. The biggest thing in Niagara really is um, disease pressure due to mildew. Um, we have um, a very high pressure here in the area. The microclimate is such that um, it's actually very humid for it being more of a continental type of climate. And um, we have some geographic features like the escarpment and the lake, which uh, tend to contribute to that factor. So we have to deal with um, a lot of mildew and oftentimes uh, grapes get infected with mildew when they are lacking certain nutrients or lacking something that is allowing them to be fully healthy. We do add a lot of uh, different types of legumes and uh, native grasses that help fix a lot of nitrogen in the soil. And the primary source of um, nitrogen here would be compost ads. And I think that uh, we uh, source our compost from some of the uh, more stringent uh, farmers in the area that really are doing it for us under our guidelines and in a way that um, gives us a really rich um, uh, compost and we get uh, very good growth from it. Uh, our copper crops do really well. Um, even in a past vintage like we've had, we've seen a very good response from our plants with the addition of uh, you know, our naturally aged compost. So at Promarset we also have or an organic garden and that organic garden um, supplies our gourmet restaurant that we have on site. Well there's a lot of clay in Niagara so the struggle here is to find uh, deep soils that originated more from um, a combination of sedimentation and a buildup of, of high organic material over time. So actually this site here is a former riverbed. So we have a lot of river stone mixed with sand, silt, and clay um, on this site. There's uh, several different types of soil type here on, on the uh, property. And um, through that, it allows our, our wine grapes to kind of express themselves a little differently based on the soil type. So the nice part, thing about clay is that there's a high concentration of flavor and it tends to keep the grapes smaller. So we, we as winemakers like smaller grapes because we have more flavor in them. There's less water. There's a higher skin to juice ratio. When you start to get into sandier, deeper soils, the grapes tend to be larger. The clusters tend to be larger, but they're also filled with more water. So that flavor is somewhat watered down that organics are not possible in Niagara. Wine is a living thing and we often forget that by filtering or by adding things to it we're actually taking away a lot of the natural expression that the wine wants to show us. We're trying to straitjacket it into tasting a certain way or expressing itself in a certain way. I think that the true expression of wine is to allow it to do what it would naturally do. If that's the natural expression of the wine, then who are we to change that?